This time around on Mel's Mountain Garage, we're gonna make Rusty's fuel lines from this to looking like this. Follow me along as I make the old school looking rubber fuel line, fuel tee, you know, a nice stainless setup with AN tube nuts and sleeves. I'm gonna work on Rusty, my 1932 Ford five window coupe you see behind me. The plan this time around is purely aesthetic. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't need to be done, but it's one of them upgrades, you know, you get stuff done and, and you want to improve upon it later on. Short backstory is this 32 Ford has been around since 1988. My dad had bought it. It's just a rusty, deteriorated steel body. So it is a 1932 Ford five window, original steel body. Um, small block Chevy, a bunch of aftermarket parts. I'll talk about it a little bit when I'm, when I'm working on it. But what I would like to do is upgrade all the fuel lines from the fuel pump to the carburetors. Right now, it's just got some stainless line with some brass tees and rubber hose and whatnot. And while functional, I'm not entirely happy with how it looks. So let me show you what I got going on. This is what we have currently. It is... It's got two Holley 450 CFM or 490 CFM. I don't remember. I'd have to look the number. Sitting on top of what I think is an Offenhauser intake. No, it's an Edelbrock. It's an old Edelbrock tri uh, OEM style, you know, stock fuel pump, nothing snazzy. I mean, this engine isn't anything real fancy. It's got flat tops, a mild cam, uh, iron heads that just had a, a a good valve job and whatnot done to it and it doesn't have maybe but 9,000 miles on it but the engine is 20 years old so anyhow I want to replace that stainless line or I'm sorry steel line with the fittings we got a flare fitting there and some adapters with the T my pop to put a, a fuel pressure gauge there and like a dual carb inlet Y with some rubber fuel hose into barb fittings that come with the carbs my goal is to replace that with all hard line, tube nuts and sleeves, stainless steel. I've picked up a bunch of stuff from Summit. Summit's one of my favorite joints. Um, those guys are awesome. Summit, if you're watching, thanks. I have Summit brand tube nuts and sleeves. These are the tube nuts. Here are the sleeves. These are some Russell adapters. I hope I bought the right ones for the carbs to go to AN. You got a roll of 25 foot of stainless. I'll always use this stuff if I ran out. Unfortunately, I don't have a black T, but this T here, you see that little Allen plug. Yeah, I'll pull that out and mount the gauge in it. I'm uncertain how I'm gonna do this. I've been thinking about running this up here and then branching off the left up to that car, branching off the right up to that carb and feeding it down it's less tubing used and it might be less vibration i think that's what i'm leaning towards a and b it will allow me to see the gauge that i want to have sticking out of there i was just going to run it down here and run them up but honestly that that might look worse i don't know those who have never worked with stainless hard line before it can be difficult especially if you want to double flare they say you can't but you can uh, i'm only going to do one double flare just to go into the fuel pump, only because I don't have enough room down there to adapt it from the uh, like double flare brake line style to NAN. Everything else will be used in the single flare, 37 degree tube nut and sleeve. I want to use my rigid 377, 37 degree flaring tool. A lot of other flaring tools are 45 degree, now, if you're using like that Iconal or Sunifer or whatever you, I'm not Iconal, Sunifer or stuff like that, you could probably get away with a 45 degree flare and force it on. And I have plenty of other flaring tools to use, but I'm going to keep with that. I'm also going to use my old school Imperial Eastman uh, 3 8 tubing bender. So, you know, it's got a little bit less than an inch radius it should work out well you definitely don't want to use them janky parts house el cheapo tubing benders because i'm here to tell you 
these will not bend that stainless knife, still kink them. I've got tubing benders all the way up to a half inch for stainless line. Anyhow, a handful of proper tools and you can, you can get a quality job. Fortunately for me, I did order the correct AN carb adapters. So they thread right in there. I did kind of did that off camera just to make sure before I finish filming. So I can go on ahead and get myself a drain pan and start tearing the stuff off. An important note, if you're ever farting with these hollies is a lot of these fittings have this, uh, let me get that out of there. A lot of these fittings have this steel shim washer, sort of like the brass washers you would use on a, a banjo fitting or a brake line or something like that. I mean, it's actually just like you'd use on a banjo fitting. So you just want to make sure you don't lose them because they're a pain in the ass to find and not readily available at your local parts house. Hopefully the lighting's pretty decent. Get ourselves some hose uh, hose clamps, crimps, pinchers. Do the fuel line there so you don't siphon the tank out. Without knocking them off like I just did. This way here, the Fuel tank doesn't start, like I said, siphoning out onto the floor in your shop. And I'm going to lose some fuel coming out of the whole fuel line set up here. And that's to be expected. I'll have a tray on the floor. <clears throat> Simple as that. I'm going to keep these fittings on the hoses just kind of set them away <clears throat> so they're there for a later date in case I need them and they'll spin on the hose just fine these carbs got these out of the box they were out of box carbs from some racing their jegs many years ago. Slapped them on this thing. The jetting was close. Mechanical secondary, single feed, single pump carbs. No chokes. And there just was not enough pump shot to wet down the walls of that tunnel ran. And it would only nose over and get a real, lad, real nasty, lean sneeze. So, after putting a couple miles on it and almost getting freaking plowed into it in an intersection, I went and upgraded the accelerator pumps to 50cc pumps, as you can see here. A couple jet changes. It's actually surprisingly good on gas mileage and runs rather well. Fuel lines off. Let's uh, start fitting up the new. With the fuel line all off, you may be able to see where I'm trying to go with this. I was thinking a little along the lines of that right there. Pretty simple. With a 90 and a 90, two nut sleeve. Come up here with a 90 and a 90 and loop around real nice into it. Pretty simple. It allowed the gauge to hang tight. If it wobbles at all, I can make a, a bracket right there to hold it. I might even tuck it in. It depends on, it all depends on that radius of that tubing bender. So I'll try and get it pretty tight and get this guy up fairly high. And not only that, I don't want it really, really in a way in case like I got to take that accelerator pump off. This way here I can get the screws off and I can pull the accelerator pump off with the carb on, I think. Oh wait, no, no I can't. So it's Russell fitting here. Got our little, our little washer. Put that guy up in there. I'm sure the rock looks pretty solid. I have AN wrenches, honestly. 
they still scratch it anyway. And uh, frankly, I don't care right now. It doesn't really mar it at all. Here's the T. See, I pulled the arm plug out of it. You can see it passed through. You can see the copper, the rusty right there. The gauge is an MPT. I think it's an eighth inch MPT. The self sealing, but I still put a little Teflon on there. But see that that rag, that shit in there. You want to make sure you don't leave any of that in there from dirty threads and crap like that. Now, stainless steel line is pretty stiff, man. It's it's pretty tight. I don't have a tubing straightener. I know they're out there. I know. Eastwood makes some, and I know other manufacturers do. Honestly, the length of this line is not long enough in between bends to even notice. I can get it pretty straight, rolling it out, and just kind of rubbing it along my, my thigh the opposite way. It'll get pretty sorted out and straight. Uh, I'm going to use my body saw real slow so you don't really heat it up in a kneel, and you got to kind of file the edges all down on the outside. We'll get a little bit of picture of that and then deburr the inside and go on ahead and use that rigid 377 like i said this thing is awesome they are not terribly cheap you can find cheap ones on amazon but you got to be careful because they'll look just like this but they'll be 45 degree not 37 degree you need a 37 degree for these tube dust sleeves eastwood does make a nice tubing flare uh Finnegan and them guys use it on Finnegan's Garage. Uh, my cousin's husband has it, but it's in storage, so I'm just going to use the rigid. Hi, Olive. There's Olive. There's Bean. Hey, Beans. Wiggle butts. My shop helpers. Oh, anyway, today is the 1st of April, and if you can see behind me, I mean, it's snowing. It was hailing. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, it's been nice here, Pennsylvania. I've had doors open. Anyhow, back to task at hand. Here's our bender. I have a tube nut goes on first and the sleeve. You can see the sleeve has a fatter end on it. There's a little bit of a flare in there. Slide that on, make sure that fat end goes there. So this way here, when the tube nut is over it, you can kind of see it there. With this bender, you pick your size, set it up in there, set the line flush with the top. Sorry, I can't get it to focus. Set the line flush with the top and go on ahead and flare it. All right, this is 3 8 tubing. There's our 3 8 I get that guy down there. I'll just use a piece of steel here. And make sure it's flush. You can see those divots. They kind of line up with the divots in the die or the chuck. This is ratcheting. Run this guy down. It's got some effort for sure, but the T handles nice and wide. Gives you a decent amount of leverage. And if you just heard it, it broke free. Back it off. Get the T-handle off. So you can slide it all the way back to the pivot. I had it all the way off. I just didn't have the... 
There is our 37 degree flare. There you see the tube nut sits on it. Or I'm, I'm sorry, the tube sleeve. Then we'll have the tube nut. Bam. And this you can see the the flare on a AN fitting. 37 degree fits in there nice and tight. It's perfect. It's kind of hard doing this with one hand, but there you go. That's just of a 37 degree flare with that tool. The tool is wonderful. It goes down, you can't go too tight. It's got a, a clutch of sorts in it. And that's it. They like said it's not cheap. These are 120 something or another today on Amazon. But it does go all the way up to three quarter. I've used it up to a half inch. It is sold for a lot like copper and stuff like that for HVAC, but it will do stainless and steel. You just can't go really, really, really thick wall. I don't remember what the specs on the wall thickness are, but typical brake line tubing like I have from Summon or I've used from uh, uh, inline tube and stuff like that on a wagon. This That tool flares it perfectly fine. And upside with tube nuts and sleeves is the tube nut typically slides over whatever bend you have. And I'm trying to get this tubing bender as tight as I can to the root. And it's uh, <clears throat> stainless is not easy to bend for sure. So I know I want 90 degrees. And that's 90. Boom. And you can see it's a pretty it's a pretty tight bend going on there. So I'll ensure that it fits the car. And then we'll go from there. Well, that bend will work just fine. I was hoping to get a little bit tighter, but I really can't with my uh, tubing bender. I'm sure there's other ways. I thought about bending the tube, and I very well may, and then cut it further back and then flare it, but I can only go as far as the thickness of the tube nut and the flaring tool. So I might be able to suck this in a little bit more, but I'm not sure. But this should be able to allow me to go kind of straight down right through that crack in a tunnel ram and put the T right up under here and then come up with a nice bend on that side. I made a mark for how deep I want it to be. There is a zero on this bender. We can start out with, go on ahead and get your bend lined up, and, oh shit, I just, it just moved, that's all right, I can straighten it. Now I bought 25 feet of line on purpose, so it can be nice and long, and I have enough mistakes and that sort of thing. I'm gonna use my air saw and cut the line where I want it. Man. And I'll use this is this will be a this will be long so I figure out where I want it. Make sure you get all the shit out of there. Well, let's catch this up. I made an embarrassingly large amount of mistakes. You know, out of a 25-foot roll and a bunch of little 
cutoffs here in the ashtray, I've probably wasted, I don't know, a foot and a half. It's taken me a good bit just to get to this point with all the mistakes, but I did figure out kind of what I wanted. And that's what we have thus far. So coming out of that carb into the T, the gauge is not tight, so don't mind it not being correct. And then run up in the air, I'll come out of this T, straight down to the valley of the intake, and probably either over top of the alternator bracket or right below it. Those bends are easy, it'll pretty much be an elbow. Those bends are easy, it'll pretty much be an elbow up, maybe a 45. That part's rather simple, but it will give me stainless line. I mean, you know, I'll pop a picture up here in the corner just for comparison real quick, but already that looks a hell of a lot cleaner. So let me work on the fuel pump to, I guess, tunnel ram rail line. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I am here to tell you, double flaring stainless steel tubing is a pain. You'll see on a ham and all kinds of message boards that it can't be done. Most bulk stainless line is single or double anneal that allows you to double flare it. Thing is, you need a quality tool. You can't be using some hokey tool. A, B, it helps to have a vice. To save these guys the pain of ridiculous montages, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I have an Imperial Eastman tool, a nice old school tool. And I couldn't get the clamp jaws even tight enough to keep the stainless from slipping. So you get it all set up and chuck it in the vise. And once you get that first bubble on a double flare and hopefully not break the die, then the rest of it's cake. It did take me a while. Excuse me. I did have to cut a piece off and finagle. I mean, I have got the Imperial Eastman. I've got two of these chucks that hold it. Uh, I do have a blue point in line, but that won't do shit on that, frankly. So... Let me pull this apart, finish that double flare, and I can be on my way. And there it is. I have the stainless line like I showed previously. Bent around and clear the radiator hose. Comes right up. You can see that there's ever so much clearance there. I'll tweak that here in a little bit, I suppose. Runs up with a 90, a little 45, and at the bottom of that T. Through the T, feeds both carbs. Got a little fuel pressure gauge tapped in on the side. We've got clearance all around. And you can see, like, that doesn't hit, but I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll probably tweak that little bit right there just to give it a little bit more but honestly it's hard on there should move fire this guy up see you leaks there's still a hole so we'll see I got all the leaks. Unfortunately, I boogered that that peanut up or that uh, tube nut because I had to crank that mf -er down there really, really, really tight. Ah, look at that, and it's still leaking. It ain't gonna get no tighter.
They got the rest of them. This guy here is still leaking for some damn reason. I can't tell. I'll have to sort it out, but that's the last little bit. Maybe I have to be burned at. That flare, like I don't know, but I'm trying to tear that shit up. These guys are okay. That's why I don't think. That's why I don't believe in the. I mean, not that I don't believe it. I have never had luck with the AN aluminum adjustable wrenches because they always end up like getting all jacked up. I have them, but when you're doing stainless steel lines and shit like that, like it never seems to. It never seems to get tight. I mean, I have a blue point, you know, and I have another blue point, but they're all boogered up, especially when you're doing stainless line and trying to get that, not that sleeve down tight. So, all in all, let me go and fix that leak, but it's done. All right, well, that wasn't a terribly difficult job. It looks so much better than this whole other thing. Well, like I said, while it was functional, it was done 25 years ago with tools that my dad had to get done. <clears throat> so it looks better. It looks a hell of a lot better. Now, I certainly have the correct flaring tool and, and stuff like that. So it's not really something you can kind of do if you're just farting around. It does take a little bit of investment. Those Imperial Eastman tubing benders, you can get on flea bay all day long, anywhere from 40 to 120 bucks, depending on the size. The Ridge 177, 177 was it? 377 flaring tool is 115 bucks or so. You'd be hard pressed to find one used. Most people buy them and hold on to them forever. Uh, so just there with that flaring tool and a tubing bender required is a $200 investment just in tools. Then the coil of stainless tubing from Summit Racing. I think that was 30 some odd bucks for 25 feet. It wasn't terribly expensive. I wasted a couple of feet. Two nuts and sleeves from Summit Racing or two, three bucks for a pack of two. So, you know, I already have the tools, but it probably cost me 60 bucks to do it. If you don't have the tools, it'll cost you more. And I can see why guys use all the braided line and the AN fittings and shit like that. And some guys like, it. and frankly, I don't, if it's not needed, I don't like it. I, I just don't. I have plenty of it laying around. I could have, I could have completely did it in PTFE line or regular line i just don't like how it looks it also pays to have extra wrenches um, most of my wrenches here at home are all sks uh you see i got a mixture of sk snap on blue point but i did need a japanese wrench here that you know has been uh, uh drop forged and it's thinner than the SK wrenches and it allowed me to get that fuel pressure gauge on Thanks for following me along on this little journey on Improving the looks of the engine bay on old rusty here my 32 Ford. I did get the fuel leaks fixed I had to pop pop the tube nuts off and reset them on the AN fittings, but It was kind of a pain. I mean the stainless steel line is much harder than the aluminum obviously So the aluminum is kind of what's got to give to have that 37 degree flare seal Go on ahead and hit the like and subscribe. They should be up here somewhere. Check out my Instagram. Links in the description below. It's Mel's Mountain Garage. And leave me some comments, man. Good or bad. I, I appreciate any and all feedback. It's awesome. So thanks again for watching Mel's Mountain Garage.